Cancer is as unique as your own DNA. Tumors are, in their essence, a genetic phenomenon where one cell makes a mistake replicating, and that really depends on each person's DNA. Treating everybody the same can't be right if every single tumor is unique. In the book that I wrote, I talked about everybody needs a cavalry. You need a cavalry. You need emotional supporters? You do. You need people who are going to tell you the truth, no matter what. My OBGYN called me with a diagnosis, and I honestly said to my doctor, this is one of those moments, and it will be secret, and I won't tell anybody, but you have the wrong chart. You have actually called the wrong patient. And she said, Sandra, that kind of denial is going to kill you. It was just this very serious aha moment for me when I became a patient. You know, what is going to happen to my son? He's an only child. I have raised him by myself since he was one and a half. It's not just going to be in the U.S. We're going to launch this everywhere. Everybody's going to get access to an innovation all at once at the same time. How am I going to get my product launched? How am I going to move this company forward? Who's going to do that? Because I'm the ambassador. And so I knew that I wanted to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. I was told and diagnosed in the beginning of August, and my surgery was August 28th. So I very purposefully said, OK, we're going to do this, and we're going to move at the speed of light. We're going to go as fast as my body will allow me to go. What I wanted when I got my diagnosis was to have my life back. She was just all from the start kind of like, all right, Dr. Shatsky, let's get her done. And I explained to her, I'm going to continue working, so I need you to work with me. And she said, I will. able to sequence her tumor and look at what mutations drive cancer cell growth and then talk about how we might target those. She came with scientific data, research, evidence, information, and outcomes, but she also came to the table with an extraordinary amount of empathy. The best thing I can do is honestly just offer them a shoulder to cry on and a hug and say, you know, we're going to do this. I would have my list. Here are the items I would like to cover today. She said, if you wouldn't mind, I would like to not cover any of your items. I want to see if we could just talk. And I said, about what? I felt like I could relinquish some control. It had been proven to me, and it was very clear that she cared about me at the same level that I cared about myself. I did a lot of research on Padre's Petal, and what I discovered was the amount of investment they make in research, but innovative research. We actually took that money directly from what they gave us, put it into the trial funding, and have already treated half of the patients with a novel immunotherapy combination that was developed here at UC San Diego. People with no family history, people without cancer genes, people who you would never think, even genetically, are supposed to end up with certain cancers, and yet they do. What things drive cancer cell growth? What mutations are present in tumors? and What went wrong? I can take those translations where we've just discovered something recently in the lab and apply it in real time to a patient's case. They have created a movement. And the movement is really about survivorship. It's about what's the technology advancements and the innovation that we have to invest in so that people are thriving and there's more and more survivors. Sometimes what we choose chooses us. This is about my life. This is about the life that I want to get back. The fact that 40,000 women still die of breast cancer every year is completely unacceptable. And until that stops happening, then I will spend, you know, half of my time treating patients and half of the time doing research until we can figure out why that is and make it stop. Mm -hmm.